We're recording, by the way, just so you know. So no, no swearing, no disparaging remarks towards the guy that hooked you like 10 years ago and you're still, <laughs> you're still upset about it and you're thinking, how, how can I get back at this guy? Yeah. And uh, so anyway, well, listen, guys, thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out with me and Jeff today. Another episode of Gold Ball Hunting. Uh, we're over at goldballhunting.com where we're right now. And by the way, we've got an interesting topic today that um, I think it's a huge myth that you're, you and I are going to bust. You don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but no, I'm going to bust it. But you're going to break it up big time. Uh, but before we get into it, Jeff and I are offering a free complimentary 10-minute uh, private coaching call that you can get on uh, with us. And, and we're, all we're asking is, is this is not a social time. It's not tea time for 10 minutes. You know, we're, we're not going to go and say, hey, how you doing? You guys are doing a great job, blah, blah, blah. No, we want you to bring that number one thing in your game right now. That's holding you back from it's greatness. the crap out of you. <laughs> yes. And if you can figure it out, and that's why we're here, is you might even go on the tour. Now, that's an expensive proposition. If we actually help you on the tour, I keep saying it's 50%, but you're not going with that. You're saying, no, we get 60% of all their earnings. 60-40, yeah, yeah. 60-40, <laughs> 60 for us. All right, cool. Um but anyway, we want to help you solve that number one thing so you can, you can bust through and, and do whatever it is you want to do with your tennis game, whether it's singles or doubles, stroke technique, tactic strategies, maybe something upstairs, right? We ought to unlock that brain, help you get out of your own way. The way to get on the call with us, it's free. It's private. Go over to goldballhunting.com and put in a first name and email address, and you'll get immediate access to our online calendar scheduler where you, not us, you get to cherry pick a date and time that is perfect for you. So I've been rambling on. I've forgotten what the topic is. <laughs> um, uh, yes, 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 yes. I don't know if this is a myth as much as it is a perception. Um, but that we as, a bla- to- as, as much as a, as a blatant lie. No, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know what you're going to say. So <laughs> boy, well, you do have a little anger today. That's, I, I, I like that. Good. I think that guy 10 years ago is still, is still in your craw. Yeah, um, but I think sometimes when we, when we tell po- uh, uh, players, uh, to simply stop looking for the exit, um, to stay in the point. And we know the better players out there, the top players who are winning gold balls, they know how to stay in the point without pushing. Right. And I think there's this sense that, well, if I'm just staying in the point, then aren't I just pushing? I mean, shouldn't I be trying to force everything all the time from the serve, from the return, from whatever's that second shot? Shouldn't I be forcing play? And, And the answer is no. The answer is how do I stay in the point, Jeff, without becoming a pusher? Question mark. <laughs> Let the games begin. All right. So <laughs> I, I just I just feel like I just yeah, well, feel, I, I just I, feel I, like there's this sense that I don't want to be a pusher and you're telling me I gotta stay in the point. And it seems right. like if I extend the length of the point, doesn't that mean I'm a pusher? <clears throat> Right. Uh, the answer, the, the first answer to that is no. And okay, the second so answer is, and the second answer is, if if you've changed, you know, the way you're actually executing your strokes, then yes, you might be at that point becoming a pusher in that context because now maybe you're just bunting the ball around the court because you're filled with fear. Oh my gosh, I might lose. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to stay in the point. I'm afraid I'm going to overhit and every other possible, Oh my gosh, that we can think of. So, and, you know, and, staying and, the- and, and let me rudely interrupt you for one second. Um, pushing is a strategy that works. So we are not saying that every, that no one should push. And there are times in a match if you're if you're going down the tubes. I mean, if you're not if you're not a pusher, if you've actually got a game plan out there, that there are there are ways to to, to stay in the point and have a game plan. But sometimes, right? 
Right. It's not working. And so there may be a moment in your in, in the match, you've lost the first set, you're down a break in the second set, and you go, you know what? For the next six or seven minutes, I'm going to push. That's a strategy. Right. That's not a <clears throat> negative thing. Right. Can I get this guy to slow again? I got to extend the end of the match. Can I get this guy to hit a few more balls and maybe just get his men mentally, get him to think like, wow, you know, just get the wheels to come off a little bit, you know, right. and, and, and get the guy to, to, you know, everything slowed down. So now well, his, the you're, pace kind of, you're kind of getting him thinking he's been on a roll. Yeah. And, and part of it is yeah. you because you've been so quick to just keep going point after point after point. Right. You're keeping his role going. You're keeping his rhythm going. Hey, man, why don't you push for six or seven minutes and see if you can't get this guy to think yeah. about what's been going on. But yeah. anyway, I, I, I digress because I, I know that you're on a roll here with, with your train of thought in terms of, of staying in the point does right. not mean that you're a pusher. No. It, it, it just means, you know, our, you know, the pattern work first, you know, we talk about pattern work and being able to use that and understanding how to seamlessly connect patterns based on the opponent I'm playing, um, understanding when to shift those patterns. Um, and again, we're, you know, I'm, we're just talking generalities here too, a little bit, but the, the, the bigger thing is, oh, I just lost my train there a little bit. Um, Ah, <laughs> the I bigger thing, right? No, what you were, is, well, you were talking about shot patterns and kind of blending them together. Oh, well, well, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, you know, every time we hit the ball over the net, one of three things is happening. It's offense, it's neutral, or it's defense. And I'm making choices on what it is I'm, my intention is with those shots. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with the intention to be neutral for for four or five hits, which but that doesn't mean I can't aggressively get ready, aggressively prepare, and aggressively hit this high roller with maybe just a a little extra jack on the top spin. So yeah, it's neutral, but it's it's got a little attitude. So and it's, it's and it's and it's actually going right back up the middle at the guy. We, yeah. we know he's going to touch it, but you're not a pusher. You're actually bringing right. you're 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 bringing some some artillery in there that he's going to have to deal with. Right. And so there's a thought process behind it. There's an intention behind it. Like, you know, if I can get this guy to hit three balls in a row from up above his eyeballs, does he give me something better to look at? And maybe I haven't discovered that yet in this match that that I, I've got. I just, you know, like you said, do I need to push? Uh, yes, but no. And so is the is the pushing that you know the pushing we're talking about is really an intentional um, nuance to probing your opponent and still can I find some sort of Achilles heel there somewhere? You know the other thing on on offense, you know neutral and defense, is that players tend to live in each category. Because they got put there, not because they chose it. So a player gets pushed back six, seven feet, eight feet, ten feet behind the baseline, and they put up the high roller or they they, they put this shot up, and then they kind of hang there. You know, they hang in that geography that's six, seven, eight, ten feet behind the baseline. Because because there's no thought behind what they just produced. And so now they're gonna hang back there and just play deep. Now I'm playing defense. Until somehow I'm not playing defense, right? <laughs> That's a great strategy right there. I'm and doing so, this until somehow I'm not. Until I'm not. But it's not, you know, and obviously it's not a conscious thought, but you can see it. I see players do this all the time. And so if, if you're staying in a thought process of constructing a point, I'm backing up to play defense on that one shot. I'm choosing defense as a shot selection for that one shot. Now I'm going to move back up to the baseline and take my baseline back. And if I have to back up again, so be it. But now I'm going to choose defense on that one shot. Now I move back up to the baseline. And oh, 
what a lucky break. The guy kind of chunked the next ball, and it's actually bouncing at the service line. And because I took my real estate back and I'm at the service at the, at the baseline, I, can, I now see that ball as an opportunity. If I'm 10 feet behind the baseline because I'm playing geography tennis now. Right, yeah. <laughs> I don't even see that as an opportunity. I see it as a ball that just landed shallow and I'm struggling and, uh, you know, I'm hating life right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that's so, good. That's good. I, I just, I just, I, I want players to, to think that, that there are times when you got to stay in the point when you don't really have an opportunity. And I think too often what happens is we create these opportunities. We create these things in our mind like, well, this is something I could do some damage with. I could win the point right here. Right. And it, 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 most of the time, it ends up obviously in an unforced error. Um, and, and so, or a forced error, whatever. You forced yourself into that error. I want players thinking, you can stay in the point and not be a pusher. You can inflict right. some pain. And it may take you one or two or three shots before you get the chubby fat sitter. We're now okay. Okay, let's see if we can do something here where maybe right. the point's not where maybe the point's going to be over. But um, anyway, well listen, let's yeah. let's let's make this one short because my my lovely bride is now in the kitchen and she I know she's got she's my lovely wife. She hates it when I say bride. So <laughs> my lovely wife, uh, we've been married a long time and she anyway. Oh, good. She's smiling. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so, well, listen, uh, guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. This is a short version of Go Ball Hunting, the podcast, but I think it's an important one. And, yep. uh, again, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, again, a reminder, we are offering, Jeff and I are, are offering a free private uh, three-way coaching call with you. It's 10 minutes. You bring that one thing in your game that you're struggling with right now, and let's see if Jeff and I can't set you on the path to success. The way to do that, go over to goldballhunting.com, first name, email address, and you'll get access to our online calendar scheduler Oof. where you get to cherry pick a date and time that works best for you. Jeffrey, this is your moment in the sun right here, son. All righty. Like us, share us. Please subscribe. Let us know what you think down below. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Get out there. There it is. Help someone else have a spectacular day, and we will do this again tomorrow, Jeff. Can't wait.